don't jump to conclusions, are Meghan Markle and Prince Harry going to raise the issue in court? Now the accusations of lying also concern Hardman's book. It seems that the Russians are on the verge of patience. They are amazed by what the British and American media write about the British royal dynasty. It all reminds of the series Santa Barbara, which never ends. It turns out that you publish an article or a book, write there everything that comes to mind, and when people start to resent, it is enough to say, do not interpret my words in your own way. Of course, you can get a lawsuit for slander, but apparently, even Harry is tired of legal battles. A new scandal is now unfolding around the alleged biographical work of Robert Hardman. Hardman is a well-known journalist, writer, and regarding the new book about King Charles III, it was announced that the book about him was written with the archives that the king himself provided. Well, first of all, Hardman claimed that Charles really wants to reconcile with Harry. Although the writer did not say whether the king himself expressed his thoughts to him. Secondly, the book has many hints that William is not well suited for the role of the future king. He is not as thoughtful as Charles, and he rarely goes to church, and he does not like spectacles. It is not clear, of course, why the prince should be a copy of his father in terms of character, habits, and preferences. But this is all nonsense, because in the character of the new Prince of Wales not to enter into public controversy with different writers, be it Hardman, Meghan, or his brother Harry. But the younger prince never shuts up. And if he or Markle are hurt, then to be silent it is not him. And Hardman paid a lot of attention in the book to the story of how Harry's daughter got the name Lilibet. The British media so strongly quoted the words that the Queen almost came to rage, because of this, that people literally took up arms against the Sussexes. But there were also those who decided to joke about the situation. For example, Omid Scobie laughed at the fact that he heard how Elizabeth called her horse Lilibet. Markle's buddy asked why it was not possible to name the daughter of the dukes with this name, if the queen could even name the horse with it. This, of course, is a very dubious service to a beloved friend to say that she named her daughter a horse name. The book also surprised the words of the queen herself that she had no property in her life, except for the nickname Lilibet. This, like, the only thing that belonged to her. Exactly. Nothing was at the poor thing, except for her nickname. Straight Orphan of Kazan. And $600 million, a collection of diamond tiaras, several own palaces, and a golden piano? Of course, Elizabeth lived in poverty, so she got angry when they took away the last. However, Hardman apparently forgot who he took on bread crumb. As soon as the press began to resent the rude behavior of the Megarics, who almost robbed the old woman, they did not keep silent and began not only to justify themselves, but also to angrily express their indignation now. And then Robert Hardman began, apparently, to guess something. For example, about the fact that you can get to court as a defendant. And then it began, yes, you misunderstood me, there was confusion, and the queen was angry not at the grandson and his wife. In fact, she just adored her great-granddaughter Lilibet. True, she never saw her, but it does not matter. Further, Hardman writes that the daughter of Meghan and Harry is a wonderful child, a charming baby. It seems that the writer is personally acquainted with the child, who no one actually saw neither the members of the royal family, nor the Montesite neighbors of the Sussexes. Moreover, Hardman called Lilibet a flawless child, and the press a vulture, tormenting this sweet child. We are waiting for Hardman's explanations that William is a very thoughtful young man, and we all misunderstood.